Welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have you here all once again. Today is the NBA trade deadline. So we're getting some information that will be coming into our desks uh, as we do our show today. Um, it's also a, a great day for sports in Boston because the Bruins will be returning back on ice with fans. So that, that's a nice little milestone that's finally been reached. It only took 384 days for fans to stop being able to watch the Bruins again. So hallelujah. We'll also talk about uh, the Red Sox. They are one week away from opening day. My goodness. Next time we'll be on here, we might be able to uh, be talking uh, about how the Red Sox are doing in the afternoon, which is really exciting. Um, also have some more news with the Patriots. Some great news, as a matter of fact. Um, their news that they have uh, James White now coming back and some other additions. I love what they're doing right now. So we'll talk about that. I do want to lead off the show, though, with the NBA, as much as it pains me to do that. We will do that because the Celtics are a disaster. Disaster. So they had to make some moves. So far today, Evan Fournier from the... Orlando Magic has been traded to the Celtics for two second round picks. I like the move. It's averaging uh, 19.7. We'll never know. Uh oh, we lost him. <laughs> we lost him. Who we'll never, who we'll never know. Uh oh. Well, Nick, if you can hear this. I don't oh, there we go. kind of put them over the top by any means. No, of course it won't. I, I don't think anything's going to put them over the top, but we lost it for oh, a bit. Oh, did? I don't know. Yeah, we did. We, um, but it's okay. You're back, and you seem healthy. We, we lose me. So nothing what, happened. What, what was the last part? Of that? Oh, I think uh, what you were, you were going to say, like, what we traded for, I believe. Right, Tom? I think that's what it was. That's where we lost you. All right. Like, so I'll pick it up. It I'm going to pick too, it up. Where we, okay. I'll, yeah, 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 it's all right. No, no dire need. It actually was pretty funny, right. but... Go, it's a great show so far. I am loving it. <laughs> well, it's got your Celtics, in it, so you should be loving it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the Celtics have traded for Evan Fournier. Okay, he's coming from the Orlando Magic. He's averaging 19.7 points per game. It's a good move. However, I don't think it's a move to put some over the top by any means. It's a move to make a move, I think. Well, Ooh. define top. That's what I say. Top. To find what you would call top. Yeah. It's a move that is needed. I think he fits the Celtics' plans, and he's definitely better than what you were throwing out there. Um, the question is do they stop there? I, I hope they don't. Uh, yeah. You know what? I think he's a good guy that you can have on the bench and possibly at the end of the game. Like he's like one of those guys. He's 28. So he's, he's not long in the tooth, but he, he's an older guy. And he could easily come off, uh, come off the bench, be the second unit. Um, they didn't give a lot up for him. And I don't think they, I don't think they used their mid-level trade exemption. They did not. Uh, yeah, I don't think they did, which is – actually, this, this isn't a bad, like – as far as, like, moves go, this isn't a bad, like, move move. Like you said, a move for a move's sake, which isn't bad because it seems like it's an Orlando fire sale. Because Aaron Gordon was another guy. Aaron guy. Gordon was yeah. traded to the Nuggets this afternoon. The Nuggets, yeah. Uh, actually, Phil. And the Seas were in on that a little a bit, way, too. I have a web page. Can we do a I think that's Yeah, fine. just share it. Just it share it. Um, yeah, oh, wait. I have to let you. Uh, I have to allow you to share it. Yeah, yeah. Hold I'll on, let our audience wait. know where we're getting some of our rumors from. And you're not going to see my Twitter. I'm sorry. Yeah, I would like to. Yeah. I would like to actually that's know, too. To make, I'm going to make you the host. Make you the host so you can, you can do what you got to do. All right. So, so you're the host. Share, share away. We're going to go right here to this screen. Um, should you, do you see hooprumors.com? I do, yeah. Okay, so the latest of the latest. You have uh, the Sixers, the Philadelphia 76ers, have dropped the pursuit of Kyle Lowry. I guess Toronto, Toronto's not really having a good year. Um, no, but they got rid of Powell, yes, who they, was playing they, very well for they, them. Uh, the Hawks... Uh, the Hawks yeah. might be trading Rondo. Um, that's another name that's called saw. the Magic. Uh, traded uh, Wojcik. Uh, we have one of the guys we were in on. thrown out there. 
Yeah. Uh, Danny Green, a possible destination for uh, uh, the uh, Warriors, yeah. Warriors, Golden State. Yep. Um, the big move, I think, so far today was the, um, George Hill um, going to the 76ers. Um, there's no question asked. Uh, the 76ers are better than the Celtics. Um, this is just a move that strengthens them greatly. Yeah, and I think uh, they're playing better. They're playing to their potential, which they hadn't been doing in the past two to three years. So Norman Powell, the Raptors are sending Norman Powell to the Trailblazers. That's another move. Um, and then we have um, some other moves that have continued to go on. The heat, today. the heat bolster, yeah. The latest that I have heard with the Celtics um, – Actually, we will go to Twitter. doesn't really matter. Uh -oh. We will um, – let me go to this screen over here. I'm going to bring it over here. Shams is a great follow if you're an NBA uh, fan. It gives you kind of the latest on what's going on with rumors and everything. Um, like we said, Aaron Gordon to the Nuggets. That's another big move. Um, Aaron Gordon was a name that the Celtics were interested in. They were very, very high on that guy. And I, they lost the him to latest, the Nuggets. It was like between him and the Nuggets. What do we got the for latest uh, rumor that I heard um, was, let me see if I can find him there. Show it up. Ryan Bob, he is uh, for 98.5. He's for Mass 5 and a contributor. He shared that the Celtics are – in pursuit of potential uh, move for John Collins. So I don't know yeah. what your thoughts are on that, Phil. That would be a big, that would be a big be upgrade. Being pretty good. Um, like him and Robert Williams would be a great weird, I mean, and it a looks Twin like Tower you would scenario. You part with Marcus Smart. You would part with That's Aaron a tough one. Eastman. You would part with Grant Williams. And some oh. other picks and everything too, but you know what? I like I like Grant Williams, but I, I, I think you got to do that move. You but that those are that. your two; those are arguably your two best defensive players. Yep. Too, and that's the thing you're totally giving up on <laughs> playing defense, mm -hmm. which you already kind of were in a lot of ways. Right. right? So I mean, that's yeah. But last night they kind of uh, hunkered uh, or hunkered down and, and played D in the fourth, yep. despite the. Um, the box for at the end i mean they only lost by two but it was a good game and they played with heart and it'd be sad to see uh marcus go but uh yeah i don't know i'm I, trying to see if i can get any other updates on it depends how long you have you know uh how long you have collins for he's a young guy he's like 23 i think so i don't know if he's still on his rookie contract or, or not so that's that's a big uh it's a big guy. Yeah. so that would be a big addition That'll be a big yeah. addition and a huge shakeup. Um, yeah. So we'll have to see, you know, what happens from there. All right. I am going to now go back to here and stop my share. Where is my button? Yeah, the NBA. I mean, not a lot of stop big, here. big splashes. Not a lot of big, big splashes. Well, not a lot of big kind splashes, of little, yeah. but uh, I guess the deadline, it expires. Is it three o'clock? I think it's three o'clock. Um, I forget. It's it's later in the day today. Or so, so we'll yeah. see what happens, and you might have a different Celtics team. And you know what? I'd be fine with it because you can continue to roll out what you were doing every, night after night. Um, as much as I don't want Brad Stevens here and I want Danny Ainge on another planet, you have to look at the players first. And if the players don't succeed with a shakeup, then you're going to have to start picking and choosing what your next move is going to be. Um do I think that the Celtics are a better team without Stevens and Danny Ainge right now? Yeah, I do. I think the change needed to happen. Um, again, that's my opinion on it. Um, you guys obviously have your, your take on it. But the good news, at least, because we want to bring good news. We're not the doom and glooms. We want to say that the Celtics are at least doing something to potentially get better. So that's a plus. So I'll take it. Well, actually, I guess, like, just to, to add uh, Fournier, they are using, uh, I guess, a good amount of a trade exemption for Fournier, which I didn't know you could use like uh, pieces of it for players. But I do something, so I mean, uh, well, and he's a rental, so I mean that's kind of weird to me because he kind so of maybe they make some sort of negotiation where it's a kind of like a sign and trade. So maybe they uh, extend him maybe. or some sort of situation. You never know. Maybe you so know what? I, that's not a bad idea. Staying here past that expiring contract for next season and beyond. You know, I think yeah. that will be a good move. Um, some other players that might potentially be on the move too. So Marcus Smart's name's in there. 
I think Daniel Tice is going to be out of here. Um, I think with the emergence of Robert uh, Robert Williams, I want the minutes going to him. Tice, bye. I'm so done. I, I I like Tice, but I'm so tired of seeing him uh, complain about every damn call in the book. Uh, Robert Williams is better, so yeah. I think you got to make that move too. I think he's worn the welcome out a little bit. And I also heard Tristan Thompson has been another name that the Celtics are might actually just release, flat out release. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, there have been a bunch well. of rumors. He's not been very well liked. Uh, I guess there's all kinds of things going on in the locker Well, there, there are rumors about that. Who knows rumors. what – who knows exactly what that's all about. But, yeah, no, that um, that whole thing is weird. And he, he has been a disappointment. I enjoy him as a player, and I think he got a little better, I guess, as the year went on, but he hasn't really been – he's 28. He isn't that old, but – I mean, NBA, that's it. That's older, you know, that shows. And he hadn't been dominating on the boards like he used to. So, I mean, and that's the guy you needed. But if you bring in another big like John Collins, uh, that might change a lot for you. I mean, uh, and then you have him and uh, Robert Williams, maybe even play together where you have Robert Williams back up and then you go back and forth. Who knows? But, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I like Daniel Tice, but, uh, yeah, I think – if they move them, they move them. I think we will be seeing a new Celtics team, a little bit of it, um, in the days to come. So we'll we shall see. Maybe. Uh, Tom, I'm I've missed the Bruins as as kind of bad they were playing in the past couple of weeks. I've missed them. They've been in COVID protocol. There was a couple of players that potentially had it or didn't have it after quarantine. They have not played, I think, in a week. Yep. Exactly. Last a Thursday. Week. Yeah. So. In a way, that's a good thing because now you're going to be uh, – I think it's a good thing because you're getting players back a little bit more healthy. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a little bit of a refresher and an, uh, a, re- a good rest time. But at the same time, they had a week off, and now their their first game back is against a team that they haven't been able to beat yet. Yeah, that's the tough part tonight. It is the Islanders. I don't know how – how, have the Islanders played this week? So if they continue, uh, I know they didn't play Tuesday because they were supposed to play the Bruins. Okay, so uh, I, that may mean that they haven't played in a few. So that might there might be some rust here coming coming off. Yeah, I can I, I can check. Um, the big takeaway, obviously, for the game tonight is yes, the Bruins return, but again, they're returning home with fans in a limited capacity. So that's great. Um, they'll have the fans behind the Bruins for the first. They time played in Monday in eighty-four games. So they yeah, had they played, on played since like three days or so. So yeah, I think that, that's really nothing in hockey. Um, a week down, that's something. But you're getting Rask back, which is huge. You need him. We've seen what happens with Halak. He's a backup, folks. I, I've been big on Halak in limited capacity. That's the thing. Limited amount of time for him playing on the ice. Rask is your number one. You're not going to go anywhere without Rask. You just not. Um, you are potentially returning some defensemen this evening, which is great. Um, Tenorti looks like he's a full go. Carlo is back skating. I don't think he's playing tonight. He might need a couple games left. Um, I know Krejci is playing. I think DeBrusque is still in COVID protocol. I know Smith is playing tonight. I know there's another guy. Uh, Corrali is still in um, – COVID protocol. And those guys have been kind of in and out of line. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think like we were talking about from our past weeks, it's the youth movement. We want to see more of these guys come up hungry and motivated, playing hard. And <laughs> Lost them again. <laughs> Here he goes. Take sitting down at a rally. So- I keep going in and out again, don't I? No, you, you did your patented pause. Your, your <laughs> face effect pause. Face it's the, it's the internet pause. in here today. <laughs> what the issue is. I keep, going, I, I keep seeing on my computer, I keep saying my internet is unstable. Maybe that just means I'm unstable. I don't know. That means you're vital um, or a volatile. But yeah, it'll be, um, it'll be good to have. But anyways, I'm looking forward to the Bruins returning here this evening and. Hopefully it's for the best this week down. Hopefully we get a different reserve, uh, resurgence uh, with the time that they've had off to rest and get back uh, to full strength. 
The Patriots, very happy, continuing with what they're doing this offseason. Lawrence Guy back four years. David Andrews back four years. And James White. I think the big thing here in the, in the telltale kind of sign of how the Patriots look, they are bringing back their veteran presences on the team. That's huge. James White is a character uh, person, a leader, somebody that people look at on this team as uh, one of the, kind of like a heart and soul and underdog kind of, kind of way. Um, I'm happy with that move. David Andrews coming back. I'm very happy with that. And same with uh, Lawrence Guy. This team looks excellent. It looks 2018-esque minus, of course, Cam Newton. Now, there are still rumors out there. I still feel that Garoppolo is your quarterback week one. That's how I feel. I don't know what it's going to take, but Patriots are continuing to push and push and push and push to try and get him. I know he's injury prone. I know he really hasn't proved much, but I'm taking Garoppolo over Cam Newton any day of the week, 100% of the time. So I think that that's the next domino to fall with this team. Um, it might even happen. I hope or you pray. You, you, yeah. What do you mean, Phil? I, I thought think you were rooting for Cam. Hope. Well, that's what I'm saying. You hope or you pray. Uh, I, well, whether – no. Uh, I mean, all joking aside, I hope – I don't know. I mean, it seems like they assembled all this stuff for Cam because, I mean, it doesn't seem like they have a deep threat really, and they're just playing more like you'll have two or three tight ends who just – you know, fortify the running game and also just go between the hash or the hash marks and the hash that's on the field. But, um, uh, yeah, man, I don't know. Maybe they bring in Garofalo, but how could they do it? Like, what are they going to give? I mean, you have options. I mean, you got, you got an op- options to make, to make the move. I am going to say though, I'm going to disagree on your statement with building around camp. The reason I'm going to, I'm going to disagree. One of the reasons why we love face the fact We'll never oh, know why man. we love it. There we go again. There we go. Look at Another him. He's so calm why we about it, too. Facts is because we have unstable internet and Nick freezes. <laughs> <laughs> unstable internet, but stable uh, friendships again. and relationships. <laughs> um, once again, we, I will say that um, I'm going to disagree with Phil on his uh, statement that the team is built on Cam Newton right now. I think this team is actually built on Garoppolo. And the reason I say that is because of Kendrick Bourne signing. Uh, that was one of Garoppolo's num- uh, big targets with the 49ers. That's what they say. That's screams, what they say. I, I say it, it screams of Jimmy Garoppolo-led offense right now. Um, I think they're building this team around him, and they're trying very hard to bring him back to New England. I think Cam, again, it, it's just a safety net. His max guaranteed amount of money that he could potentially make, it's $5 million apparently in his contract. Every other incentive is based on playing time. And if he doesn't hit it, he doesn't hit it. So if you pay $5 million for your backup, that's great. I mean, you can still release him. So I think they did that to protect themselves, which I'm okay with. If Cam is the backup, that's fine. If that's your backup, I'm cool with it. But Especially with starter, the other options that we have. If that's your starter leading into week one with what you just did this off season, why why go and spend, why go and break the bank and drive the Brinks truck up for a Cam Newton team that was crap last year, whether whether it was his fault or not. So I I still feel very confidently that it's it's Garoppolo or kind of bust right now for the team. I mean, maybe uh, we'll I'm, see. I know Phil doesn't agree, but I'm in full agreement, especially with all the backups that we have or the backup options that we have for quarterback after Cam. I'm actually kind of curious what they're going to do with Stidham. I I know he's leading offense workouts out in California and stuff right now, and the team's joining him and doing all kinds of work and stuff. I I think he gets released. If you didn't give him an opportunity Maybe. last year and you saw it, you saw, you, I mean, he didn't really, he has never really done anything in his career. I think he's another Brian Hoyer type. Well, I mean, Brian Hoyer, at least, you know, 
It seems like gave a crap about a bunch well, of stuff. He, he's he's seen a lot of action too. I mean, he had a lot yeah. of playing time in Houston. Yeah, and uh, in Cleveland, I think too. I mean, he Brian Hoyer at least has been around the league and has yeah. played as a backup and as a starter. And I don't think I don't know if Sidham will ever get to that. We'll see. I guess you from know what not. I heard and read, it seems like Sidham was they were kind of disappointed with him. You know, after you know when it was clear that Brady was leaving, it didn't seem like Sidham was you know. Uh, you know, jumping on that horse to try to take the mantle. And no, he wasn't. No, no. and I, I don't know. Listen, they might release him, or they might keep. They we might be stuck with the same two quarterbacks, or same three, uh, and maybe added another quarterback in the draft. I don't know. And that's another thing too. They might actually go. They might forgo Garoppolo and just keep it simple, to like tone down the offense to what Brady had it when he was was first in the league. Well, there's there's rumors there's rumors that Belichick might move up in the draft. Yeah. To get, uh, what's his name? Jordan like Lewis Mac? or whatever his name is. Yeah. Like one of the, one of the three top quarterbacks in the, that are coming in, and uh, yeah, that the Tom's right. They had that rumors floating around. I think there's some truth to that. And honestly, that'd be kind of interesting because think about it, when Brady first was on the team, like what were the majority of his stuff was slot receiver and just kind of like. Um, you know, screen passes or elaborate screen passing. And it was pretty much just kind of like he was a possession quarterback, but in game manager, but he also, you know, he didn't really, it was simplified. Yeah. He didn't throw it on the field. Like, well, he had like one or two games, I guess like that, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. It's, it's, you gotta say it's, it's interesting. This whole thing is just kind of, I think everybody wanted the Patriots to do all these moves after the season and like we have cap world we have all this about a potential to do something big and drastic i just didn't think it was going to be this drastic i mean this is great what they're doing i mean this these are the, this is the biggest this is the biggest offseason belichick has had since i i don't 94, even know 94 i, I think they said i can't even remember the what. biggest thing Kraft even came out and said that this is the biggest offseason that they've done since um he bought the team in 94 so I give them a lot of credit because it's definitely them trying to move forward into the next kind of uh, the next realm in a way, you know, the Brady post era, we need to start getting ourselves on the map and delivering and being a re- really good team again. So good job on that front for them. Um, anything else for the Patriots? I just want to chime in on the Red Sox for the next couple minutes. No, I think uh, like you were talking about earlier, I'm glad they got Andrews back. And I, I think, you know, we're going to have a pretty fun season. I don't know. I'm looking forward to battling Buffalo for and Miami for the top of the AFC East and possibly, you know, KC. You know, I don't think anybody was really looking forward to the 2020 Patriots. Not at all. After with mm. Brady gone and everything. But I think now, I think with what we have now with players returning and new additions, it's definitely setting up for a better year. On yeah, like, do we- I like that the division's more competitive now. <laughs> Yeah, it, it'll be a lot more exciting. It's gonna be. It's gonna be make for. It's gonna be. It's gonna make for fun. Uh, fun seasons now in the future. Yeah. Yep. And yep. is is High Tower coming back? Have, have yes, they? Yes. They know. Yes. High Tower is one hundred percent back. Yep. Oh, that's Let's great. Go. That's kind of crazy. And once that's again, good. congrats to Patrick Chung. Yes, Patrick Chung, the move uh, a player that was a big part of the reasons why they've won championship on the defensive end. So we tip our cap to him and thank him for all his years that he's put in as a. <laughs> oh, his eyes closed. He's being uh, contemplative. He's taking a nap. He's been taking a nap. He's just letting it all soak in. And <laughs> ready to transition into the next. Until the next phase. Oh, I don't know. Ready to talk Red Sox. It. I don't know why my internet is doing this today. It's all right. Um, good thing it's only a half an hour show today. <laughs> uh, so I just want to wrap up our show. We're going to talk about the Red Sox, and I've been really playing them up quite a bit, and it's really legit. I actually think that this team is going to be pretty good this year. I think they're going to exceed expectations. I think that the players that they have brought in have a really good upside to them. There's a lot of depth. There's a lot of versatility. And I think the biggest weakness is still our pitching. I'm not going to say it's not a strength. I don't know until the season starts, but 
from what I've seen, I know it's spring training, but they're producing. They're doing a good job. They look like they want to play hard and, and contribute and do a good job. Um, a couple of names that I just want to uh, make sure our audience is aware of going into the year. Kiki Hernandez, get to know him, get to appreciate him. He's a spark. He reminds me a lot of Brock Holt. He's somebody that has a fire, that is intense, that cares. He plays second base, outfield, all around the diamonds. You're going to see him probably in the lineup quite a bit. So get, get a chance to know a little bit more about him. Um, he's always been with the, he was with the Dodgers. He didn't really play as often because the Dodgers were loaded. You know, they had so many different players that they could pop into positions. So they're going to give him a chance to be a full starter. And I think it's going to be a very good move. Marwin Gonzalez, get a chance to know that name. He's somebody that adds a veteran presence to the team. Again, can play anywhere. First, second, outfield, wherever you need him, he can go. Gives Alex Cora a lot of options on where he's going to be playing. I think I'll, you'll see him um, splitting some time with Hernandez and at second base and then playing some left field um, for the Red Sox. So that'll be a good move there. Franchi Cordero, who the Red Sox traded for uh, with the Royals. They traded Andrew Benintendi. He was one of the players that was acquired. I, I really like the upside of this guy. The guy is a tank. He's huge. Um, I watched a part of the game last night that was broadcast and had a great hit in the game. Really stood out to me as somebody that I think can do a really good job for the team. Left-handed hitter, uh, I think has a lot of upside. Um, another name that they brought in, Danny Santana, on a, uh, a minor league kind of deal. He had a breakout year in 2019 with the Texas Rangers, got hurt, and is now fully healthy. It was a great gamble to make. and they got to try and find a spot for him on where he's going to play. Could be um, left field, could be right field. They're making Alex Cora's job very difficult. Agreed. And I like that Absolutely. because you don't know if, if these guys – where did I Where did I leave off? No, you went right through it. It's all that good. Wasn't it. That wasn't, wasn't as bad. It wasn't as bad. You went right bad. to it. Um, well, this is not going to be edited, so this is how it is. Yeah. So Danny Santana, another name, will be competing for an outfield spot. Alex Cora has his hands tied because it's a, there's a lot of players that he has to make decisions on. Um, another player, Michael Chavis, has had an outstanding spring, but he has options. So he might have to be forced to the Woo Sox. Yes, you heard that right. The Woo Sox. Not the Pawtucket Red Sox anymore. The Woo Sox in Worcester. That's right, yeah, which is causing quite a stir in Worcester because they're doing a lot of damage – um, that and place. Then, um, for pitching, I just hope for the best right now. Um, it looks like Adam Ottavino is going to be the closer for the Red Sox coming over from the Yankees, which I like. Get, if Matt Barnes is the closer, uh, there's going to be a lot of glass broken at, in my, at my store or my house. I just, I can't, I can't with Barnes. So I'm just hopeful that um, we will see Ottavino slide into that role. And uh, the best is yet to come, I think, for this team. So, in a way, there aren't that many expectations, but I expect them to be good, a lot better than they were last year. And that starts next Thursday, April 1st, April Fool's Day. No joke, they do start. Um, they will be uh, starting the season in Baltimore. Last thing I want to say, breaking news into the Face the Facts desk. We have another trade that just happened in the NBA. It is not the Celtics, but... It's a former Celtic who is now headed to the Clippers. That is Rajan Rondo is now going to be oh. a Clipper. So he is on the move. Going to another uh, L.A. team. Yep, back to L.A., Mr. Hollywood. Heading back to go. Hollywood. So um, we wish uh, Rondo, I guess, the best. I guess we want to say that. So. I know. I would, <laughs> but, uh, it would have been fun to have him back, but yeah. Yeah. Um, that's all I know for moves. There's nothing yet to report left for the Celtics, but they, stay, it's actually uh, the, stay posted. the stay trade posted. deadline is uh, over technically, I guess, at 3 p.m. Eastern yep. Standard Time. Yep. So about uh, 21 minutes from now. So oh, there might be yeah. more things coming in, but we shall see. Um, anything else, guys, before we wrap up for today? I got nothing. 
No, uh, the Bucks Celtics game was last night. It actually was a really good game. Uh, the Celtics fell apart in parts of the third and the, the second, and they really need, or was it Jackie McMullen put it best? They need two wing defenders and they need people to help out Jalen Brown. McMullen on the court. Why, what do you got to lose? Oh, I am a big fan of her crazy. Jackie Mack and Doris. Doris Per. Yeah. Oh, look at that. The 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 <laughs> the gods didn't really NBA gods didn't care for whatever right you had to there. say. They'll take care of it. Um, I said that we should put Jackie Mack and Doris Burke right onto the court because that would be uh, that would be interesting. Oh my lord! I we'll leave it at I that. detect a bit of a facetiousness, but we'll leave it at that. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but I don't uh, uh, but yeah, no, I think uh, yeah they need uh, Brown and Tatum need help. And Jeff Teague is getting better. He's playing better games. We'll see what happens. I don't think they're anywhere near anything. I just want them to make an, a decent run in the playoffs. I think they can make it to the – I'm going to maintain this. They're going to make it to the second round. Uh, they might, I don't think they'll make it to the Eastern Conference. I think they'll make it to the second round and probably lose 4-2 or maybe even go 7. But I don't think it'll go, go past second round. That's going to do it for another episode of Face Facts. We apologize for the technical difficulties from my lovely internet today, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Hopefully we get that all fixed for our next show, and we will see you April 1st. See you later. No joke. <laughs> no joke.